Good morning, one and all. Um, so it's the, nearly the end of January. This is the first day we've been able to get on the scaffold since before Christmas. Uh, it's been unseasonably cold and wet, so we can't do anything. Uh, so unfortunately, this client wanted the stove in for Christmas. Uh, that wasn't possible because of the weather. Uh, so what we have to do is build this stack up. Um, so the flue outlet wants to be at least a metre from the top of the ridge line. So we're going to build it. Build the stack up to match where it was on the neighbouring properties. Uh, put the flue line in and the stove can be up and running. So, because this is a gable end, uh, when you look up, um, which you don't often do, but you'll see that a lot of chimney stacks have pulled in towards the house. So, on a lot of old properties, because this is like maybe 1900, 1910 years ago, so this has been over 100 years, you get the weather, um, the frost and the thaw, it damages that lime mortar, uh, makes it swell, uh, makes it shrink and that allows the, the chimney stack uh, to, to lean over. You don't tend to get this problem on um, mid terraces because you've got the, uh, you've got the roof, the roof purlings uh, and the ridges, uh, the actual construction of the neighbouring property keeping everything solid and upright but because here we've only got the construction on one side we tend to find that the, the stacks will come over so at some point in the past this has been an issue because you can see here that's probably your plumb line so it's come way out and that's so what's that it's about the neighboring stacks about a meter above the ridge um, so this will be really leaning over the last thing you want is it for it to come through your roof um, it's going to let a lot of water in so at some point, they've, some, they've got some builders in, they've removed the stack and just made it viable for the, um, the gas fire. Um, get the two gas fires. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, take this stack down um, to this trip tray here. We'll have a level going right round then. And we're going to build it up using this cut stone. Um, so, yeah, and the cut stone's going to be a real good match. Um, for the existing stone um, that's on the property and on the neighbouring chimney stack so it's not going to look out of place um, so we shall come back and we shall see how we're getting on uh, oh there's plenty more work to do here so we're going to repoint the pike whilst we're on with it because uh, there's, there's water ingress there um, and these parapets here They're letting water in. You can see where someone's bodged it and put a bit of silicon on the joints. So they're getting uh, they're getting replaced. Uh, there's a few broken slates as well, so they'll get replaced while the scaffolding's up. Um, you can see here how the pointings come away from the uh, the ridges. So we're going to rebed all the ridges as well. Um, so we're going to make it watertight and. There will be a burning stove at the end of it, so we'll have a look at the stove install once the external work's done. But right, we'll see you in a couple of days, I think. Right, so we've taken the old stack down, we're down to the original drip tray. So when water runs down the side of the chimney stack, uh, if it wasn't for the drip tray, it'd run right down the wall and ingress wherever it can. So, what we've done... We've stripped the roof down, stripped the chimney down, the drip tray and we've re-bedded them so when we got down they were sloping back so any any water that gets onto the drip tray finds its way back into the, uh, the the property which we don't want so we just lifted them up and bedded them so that any water that comes down now is going off so as we've gone down uh, so this is the original lead work as you can see here, these like rips and tears. So this will end up getting uh, replaced. Uh, that's the original drip tray off the, going onto the roof. And you can see there where, at some point in the past, there must have been like water ingress. And instead of feeding the stonework into the cut that you make into the, the brick, uh, sorry, the stonework, they've just forced it in and siliconed it up, so bodge after bodge after bodge. So as we're building it up, we'll just do some remedial work from the lead work and bring it up. So, we'll look at this. So these are the two, uh, 
two um, flues that we're going to be putting liners into. Uh, that's your back room, uh, upstairs back room flue, uh, upstairs bedroom flue, uh, living room flue and dining room flue. So, <laughs> just block the flues up so no muck's going down. So as you can see, down, I don't know if you better see with the light. Uh, but you usually find that you'll get some soot and build up on that last last feather uh, of the flue. So we just cleared that out of the way so that when we come to sweep it, uh, we can get a nice clear flue and then we can put the liner straight down, no issues. So we'll we'll get some storm work up and we'll come and see how we get it on. To be fair, we've got the storm work up a uh, couple of days. Uh, so we'll just explain to you what 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 uh, the structure of a chimney stack. So we've got the the initial drip tray that we've uh, we built the stonework off, so any moisture that comes down can drip off and it's not running down the, the gable then. So we've got three courses of cut stone, and then we, um, we've got a chamfer that, that goes in. So what that does, it adds stability to the chimney stack, which is even more important because we're on the gable because we haven't got the the neighbouring house stiffening it up so we've just stepped it in like an inch and a half two inch and then it brings it up again so we've got four courses of stone um, and then on the separating the flues we've just built brickwork up there and then we just put a bit of a red bit of a render around the brickwork so there's no there's nowhere where smoke can sneak off but we're putting flue liners in here so that that won't be an issue anywhere. Um, so each um, where the brickwork has been built up to the level of a stonework, we put steel ties at intervals. So we've got uh, we've got three columns of brickwork separating the flues, so four flues, and then we've just tied it in each, wherever possible. So that's st uh, stability and uh, stiffness to it. Um, yep. So then we've we've come up again and this is the the primary drip tray so we've got another course of stone to go on here and then we can put the liners in the chimney pots so what this does it this has a dual purpose it's it acts to shed water off the chimney stack just to stop water from running down here unless it's driven in by the wind uh, but also you can imagine like these houses are probably 1900 1910 uh, so there's a lot of coal getting burnt then um, and when you're, if you have a cold flu, it condenses, um, condenses the exhaust gases of the fire. So in that's all the um, the pollutants uh, in the coal that they're burning. So as that condenses, it forms like a like a tar on the inside of the the chimney stack and the chimney pot. And when that's billowing out, if it's raining, that washes down the chimney pot. There's no, there's no real examples now. Um, you can sometimes get real dirty chimney stacks in the Calder Valley. Um, you can see where um, the big industrial area. You see where the the soots run down the chimney stacks. So what that does runs down the chimney stack, down the chimney pot, down onto this drip tray, then drips off. So it's not staining all the chimney stack. So it's dual purpose. This. Um, and these red beans. So each side of the drip tray is shedding so there's no water going into the stack. Uh, we're almost done here so what we'll do is we'll just show you how we put this, this final uh, drip tray on. A bit more tucky. We've got the last one. So these uh, these two flues are redundant. These are for the upstairs bedrooms. Um, you've got the downstairs living room, downstairs dining room. So that's why we kept these flues open so we can get the liner down. Um, and fingers crossed when the scaffolding comes down. The client, ooh, the client doesn't want any uh, any stores put in the bedroom because otherwise that's 
close one, wasn't it? Otherwise, we'll have to uh, open them for these up again. We don't want to be doing that. Just bed that on. That's nice and level there. shedding water so what we'll do now is I shall just dress this up a little bit just stops any more water ingress and while that's going off we shall go and get some dinner uh, and then we'll come back for dinner get some more stone on and we can finish the chimney stack today now and the um oh I forgot to say before we um the final point uh, the way I prefer to do it is I'll build the stone, uh, build the wall of the structure, and then I'll rake the joints back. And then once the job's finished, then I'll point it up again because then you've got a double barrier uh, where if any water does manage to get in past the pointing, it can't penetrate through this constructional layer of mortar. Uh, some people will, will point it up as they go along, but Personally, I just think it's a bit more risky of allowing water ingress. So, like I say, we're going to get a sandwich and we'll come back and we'll get the chimney stack finished off. So we're back on the stack and we are finished. Um, so we put the flue lines in, uh, the cowls and the pots, um, and that completes the uh, exhaust extraction system for the house. Um, so the, the ter as long as termination is at least a meter above the, the ridge line, uh, we're going to get enough draw. That's more than a meter above the ridge, so we'll get plenty of draw. Um, uh, the, so the, the, the pots are put on with uh, a concrete flaunching mix um, that contains grit sand, granite dust, and cement. Uh, it's just been so long in the making as this because uh, it's the end of February. We've had some like some frost, we've had snow, we've had rain, we've had sun, we've had everything on this job. Um, this, but now we're ready to go. The uh, the stone's been connected up, flue liners are putting in, everything's working as it should be. Um, so when the uh, when it gets a bit of weather on it, it'll look beautiful with this. I really like how uh, how it's turned out. Um, you know, everything's working just as it should. The uh, we've blanked off these redundant flues. With some flags so everything's shedding water away from the structure not a drip trays drip trays are shedding water the bottom drip trays are shedding water um so yeah really happy with how this job's turned out so while we're up on the roof we've uh we just rebended the ridges um because they were all shot on all over the place so we've rebedded them uh, we've done some slate repairs all the lead work's been um they're put back in place so everything is watertight. Um, and then just before we done, we took the, the parapets off um, and there was a lot, quite a few broken slates uh, going up to the parapet. Whoever done the, the re-slate in the past had slated, re-slated up to the parapets, but they hadn't taken the parapets off which is half a job our is really. So when we took the parapets off, um, there was the old rotten roof bands uh, so we slate battened, so we've taken them off, replaced them, under felted everything, uh, re-slated, um, we've used some Spanish slate instead of the reclaimed slate, it's just a bit cheaper for the job, and then the, the parapets have gone back on with the mortar mix, um, and as they're bedded on, there's a, there's, a, there's a spot where the parapets meet the stack, where water ingress can occur, so all I've done is you just cut into the stonework there, put a piece of lead on, uh, exactly the same on the other side, just to shed any water away as fast as possible. So when we got to this side, it was exactly the same, um, but this side had been slated properly. So what they'd done is they'd stripped, they'd taken the parapets off, re-slated everything, uh, put the parapets back on, 
so we didn't, didn't need to do any remedial work to the roof here um, and then because the, uh, the prevailing wind blows into the gable um, it had been repointed at, so, repointed at some point it's a mouthful um, but the, they hadn't ground out enough which is usually the case when we come to a repoint uh, the previous guy who's, who's done the job hasn't taken enough mortar out and just buttered it up so a lot of the mortar was falling away just you, you can pull it off with your finger it wasn't providing uh, uh, a function so we repointed the pike um, I think that was it on this job so right the uh, we're heading towards spring um, so unfortunately most of the nasty grotty weather is out of the way but at least the customer can uh, light the stove now. Everything's functional. And when the wind's blowing, she's not worried about the roof leaking, damp coming through into the house because everything's watertight. Um, like, a, like a duck's back. Water's burning off everything. So, right, on to the next job. Sithy.